I am Michael Urbanic. Uh, today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to kind of go over what my launch pad is. We're going to talk about some of the customizations you guys have options for different ways that you can organize it. And then we'll get into my classes and the my classes page and how you can pull some analytics about your students from the my classes page, which is pretty nifty. So any questions about the agenda? If you see me looking this way, it's because that's where you all are on my other screen, just FYI. All right. So on a scale of one to 10 in the chat, why don't, or actually, if you want to yell it out, go ahead. Um, how familiar are you guys with your My Launchpad instance? All right, we got three, we got seven, we got two. Blake, what about you? Two? That's you. I got. Uh, all right. Cool. So maybe I'm not really as good as I thought. <laughs> you might be. You might be better than me. Who knows? All right. So it's kind of all over the map, though. And so we'll kind of just dive in here. First things first is I'm going to pull up your instance of ClassLink which my version of that looks slightly different than yours because I think I have like everything possible on my screen. Yours, I hope, is a little less uh, is a little less chaotic with all these instances of my view path. But I just want to make sure that this is what you guys look like on your end for the most part. Perfect. I'm going to jump into my demo account, though, so that I don't screw up anything in your instance and we can kind of talk through some things. The first thing that we want to talk about is, are you guys familiar with how to change themes and kind of alter the look of your launch pad? I see it, some head shaking, no, okay. So on your launch pad, if you look at the top of the screen here, you have a couple different options. You have this little edit mode here, in the, I guess that's top left center, or you can use the menu bar over here. Never mind, you can't use that. <laughs> you can hit edit mode right here, and that opens up a few different options. You should be able to see theme here. Correct. Okay, so you have classic, you have primary, and you have professional. Uh, primary, if you click on it, will make everything super large, uh, easy to read for your young those young students. And uh, as I get older, it might be easier for me to read when I start needing glasses here soon. Uh, professional is something that you'd more see like on a web page with that left hand menu being tight and where you can collapse it down and kind of icon driven theme. I personally kind of like this one. It just looks nice. It's kind of how everything's built in a lot of different ways right now. But for this purpose, I'm going to go back to my classic. So you can alter the way that that feels. So that's a little bit of a customization that you can do. You can also edit the palette. The palette is not the background here. The palette's just this top bar. You want it to be black. You want it to be red. You can alter that any way that you would like. Blue again, and then you also have font size. You can add background text or add a little shadow if you wanted to just blend in a little bit. These are just basic customizations. Again, simple things that make it more relatable for you. I kind of like the, the box around it because it stands out a little bit more. And then you can alter your app size from the default. You can get larger apps kind of similar to that primary theme, but in your current theme. And you can get really small apps if that's how you like it. All right. And then I do not know, do you guys have custom wallpaper on the side here? I, I didn't think so. It's because I'm an admin in your account when I'm in there, so I can see that and it's a little bit. So you guys cannot alter this background here. So themes are basically, these options are basically just style. Like you can alter the style of your launch pad a little bit. But the real power is when you kind of get into creating 
like think of it more like your cell phone. You create folders, you create different things that are familiar to you, and you can do all of that in my Launchpad. So to create a folder, if you can do this multiple ways, you can hit your edit mode here, add folder. You can also right click on an icon and go to add to folder, and it allows you to add, create a folder on the spot. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder here. I'm going to call these Google items. If I can spell, that would help. And then you can pick your color and I will just scroll over and pick a random color. That color is not the best, but we'll deal with it. All right. Oh, that's more yellow than I thought it would be. I thought it was a little different. There we go. So now I have a folder for Google items. What's Wonderful here is I can go to Google Photos, drag, hover, drop, and I can go and place these items in my folder. So as you have more things assigned to you, as you have you add more things on your own, you can create you know some organization so that it clears up some space within your launch pad. Another way to add an item to your folder here is if you right click on one. Add to folder, straight in there. What's nice about with folders is if you do not want your folder anymore, and I go and delete it, all my items do not disappear. They just get redistributed back to my launch pad. So that's a simple way to kind of create some, some organization there. Another thing that I personally love to do is if I have items that I know that I need to sign into every single day, right? Something every single time that I log into ClassLink, every time I log in my computer, I need it up, I need it running. If you go ahead and right click, we'll say it's webinars for students, you can set it to auto launch. And then I log out of here real quick. Don't worry about that weird guy that I have up there. I thought that was funny. And I log in. If it remembers correctly, you can see webinars, webinars for students auto launches at the top of the screen here. Every morning when I log in the class link, I have about seven different things that auto launch. The number of auto launches that you have available to you is kind of dependent on your class link admin ideally recommended to stay below five just because it starts burning up bandwidth and things like that as it launches things one after the other there. All right. Another great little feature here is you have this menu bar down here. If you would like to add items to that, you can right click on something. I'll use the roster server. You can hit add to favorites and your add to favorites. You start building out new icons at the bottom of your screen. So like I said earlier, thinking of it kind of like a cell phone, you're just building the best way for you to navigate what you're comfortable with, what you're more familiar with, what you want to use there. Other options you have on your right menu here are tags. Tags are great if you have a ton of information, a ton of applications on your launch pad, a ton, ton of different resources, you can add a tag. And we'll call this Google items again, for example, I'm going to create it. I'm going to tag that, add that one, we'll add another one. And then if I search up here for Google items, sorry, if I hit the drop down Google items, anything that have that tag on that will show. So if you have a ton of math resources or a ton of social studies resources or whatever your subject matter is, you could tag them specifically and kind of create that a space specific to those types of resources. All right. So questions about what we're about the organization piece here. It's not super complicated. It's pretty simple. It's just things that you might not have known are there. You can 
unmute if you have a question you can dump it in the chat if you want to ask it there all right y'all are a quiet group let me see if there's anything else in here a few little things if you ever have an app that you want to remove right click remove app pretty simple that will actually remove it from your screen if you need more info on an app it just gives you it, it will tell you you who assigned it to you if it's from the admin it will say class link admin and finally you do have a report an issue here if you report an issue it will go to a user somebody at uh, your central office most likely if they have that set up the way that I believe they do all right so the my app the, the, the my launch pad is simple right it's, it's navigation um, the last thing here is you do have an accessibility app tools on the bottom right you can increase text size decrease text size get high contrast if that helps you can do a light background, a dark background, and I've hit so many different things now. It's blending. There we go. So if you do need some of that accessibility features, we're working on constantly building those up so that there's more so that we can you know, be accessible for everybody. All right. So let's go talk about the good stuff here. I'm going to switch my profile here to instructor. Maybe, there we go. How familiar are you all with the My Classes application at the bottom of your screen? Carrie's giving me just a, a no. I, I've got a lot of no's here. So this is, this is where the good stuff will come in. So, <laughs> no. So if you go ahead and click into My Classes, I do not know if you'll see items in here yet. It will depend on if your sys is rolled over, but what you'll, what you land on is your courses, all of them straight from the, the student information system. And, you know, coming from Georgia and understanding that yours probably will have very interesting looking uh, titles here. Well, I'll show you how to get rid of those. It might be your course number, your 27 dot whatever number depending on how your information comes in we can adjust those they will be your periods as well so a couple of things to note here it's going to tell you how many students you have if you have any apps assigned to your courses specifically they will also show up here which is great and then if you go ahead and you can you have two different views you can have a tile view or a list view but if you go ahead and click into one of your instances, it will come up. We'll start with there are no announcements. I have not created any, any announcements. If I would like, we'll get to announcements. But the first thing that I would want to do for my students is I would love to rename these things so they actually know whose class it is and what it is. Because if they see that what comes from your SIS, they'll be slightly confused, I imagine. To edit the name of your class, hover right here. It's a free text box. You can do Mr. Annex first period. Click out of it. The class is simply renamed there. Uh, all of them get assigned some icon. You can go in and you can edit the icon. There's not a lot of selection there. I've got nothing for you on that one, but you can just do colors if that works better for you. I'm going to go with the long and winding road here, and as you can see, it instantly updates there. Moving on, you have some great information here. One, you have announcements. You have, we'll talk about the apps, discussion boards, and then this is where some of your analytics comes in. So to create an announcement, you would come up and you would click on your little megaphone up here. Create announcement. You can select multiple classes at once if you want to do it across. So if I want to do it, this one, this one, this one. I can set a start time. I can set an end time. 
I'm going to say this is going to end next week. My title is Reminder Project Due. And then I would ideally put some information here about the project that is due. And this is just a gentle reminder for your students who have probably never forgot that they have an assignment due that's worth a ton for their grade, right? Easy way, and I'm just going to do test here, easy way to add the announcement. When they log on, that will show up right on their screen for them when they log into the My Classes. You can always go back and edit it. You can remove it. And then when they expire, you can view expired ones. As you can see, I was testing one in March. So this class has currently no announcements. If I reload this, it still says I have no announcements. You all just watched me create an announcement. So we'll call that technology working for me. The next option down here is apps. So you see apps that I've added here. If you go to add new app, it's going to go to your district library. It will not go to our global library. You guys do have a district library and you'll be able to add apps from there. So any app they've added to your district library for you all to use, you should be able to go in here. Uh, I have a ton. I'm going to hit Kahoot. But again, I want to add Kahoot to several of my classes. I'm going to confirm. So now all of those courses will have Kahoot. If I want to add a web link to a news article, I can hit add your own app. I can title it news. I can send them to the exact URL that I want them to go to. Um, depending on what you teach, you might have different items that you want to send them to this way. Once you add that URL, Type it in, hit select, we'll use this, nbc.com, select icon. Again, the icons are what they are. I'll use news. Let's see. We got some things that come up. We have news from Long Island as well. So there are some icons that make sense. There are some that are just generic. I'm just going to use newspaper. Actually, let's go ahead and MS NBC. I have a perfect icon then, so I can add that now and all of my students would have access to that as well. And it will show up here. If we ever need to remove something, come in, just hit remove and it's gone. No more access, direct access from my classes for your students. Any questions about the apps piece of this? Nope. Mandy, I got a question for you. You, you were a seven. Are you, have you learned anything yet? Or are you still? Uh, no, I, I changed um, the picture and my the name on my classes. And then I, um, the auto launch thing. Cool. Set that up to auto launch stuff when I sign in. Yep. That's awesome. Yes. Cool. I'm, gl you. I'm glad you got something, even though you <laughs> felt so confident. <laughs> right. Yep. Another thing that you guys have access to here are discussion boards. Uh, we're all pretty fam familiar with what a discussion board is. If you want to create a new thread, this is a new thread. You can create it. And your students can reply. You can get rid of the replies to help moderate that. Um, I think discussion boards with our students are always kind of a interesting dynamic. You've always got somebody that will want to, uh, you know, push the limit there. But the good thing is you're going to see exactly who it was. There's no anonymous posting or anything like that. If you need to go edit it ever, you can just go edit it, save, and there you go. And then if you want to delete it, red X, delete, gone. Down here is where I really think we get into the bang for your buck in my classes. And I wish as a teacher that I had access to this, especially last year would have been a great time for this. Uh, one, when you click on students, you can see all of your students. And you can see, 
I don't believe you'll see good analytics on my end because this is a demo account, but if you click in, you'll be able to see some analytics on that student. And yes, I get the wizard that says your demo account does not have analytics populated, but something to check out right there. So you can see a little bit of information about each student. If you guys have, you can manage students. If you have password reset on, you can click into the student. You can set a temporary password for your student and reset it there. That resets all the way. The next time they log in, they'll type that temporary password in and have to type reset their password to something new. So if your students like to forget their passwords, this proves that you can at least give the power to them. Hey, I can get you logged in immediately. Let's go ahead and knock that out. That's definitely a powerful feature. Logins down here, this is where like last year, amazing. I can see that Renee has been in Monday, Tuesday. She skipped yesterday. She never logged into the class link. Thursday, she's back in. This might not be perfect for if you guys are in person because you're gonna see them, you're gonna see what's going on. If by chance, we're out again for whatever reason. This is an easy way to see brief attendance, right? They're at least logging in. They're giving us an idea of if they're meeting that need. And you can export the week. You can change the week. You can set a custom range to see who's logging in when there. Also great for parent, parent conferences if you're trying to build kind of, uh, you know, just kind of build on, hey, we're trying to get them, you know, to improve. We're not seeing them log in. They're logging in. They're going to spend more time. They're, they're getting more input in. And activity goes right along with that. When your students are logging in, you can see how long they're being engaged in ClassLink. And if you click in, in what app specifically. Now, my data, again, is not great because it's pulling from a hodgepodge of fake and real accounts and mixing it in. So this is just test data. But for your students, you'll have a better idea of what apps, when, how long should they be in there. And you can kind of get an idea how they're engaging with what you're assigning uh, coming from the ClassLink portal. Any questions about logins, students, or activity? Were you guys familiar with being able to see any of that analytics before? No. Mandy says yes. Uh, hey, it's good that you know. All right. So I, I think that's a great way to, you know, again, Parent conversations. Here you go. I assigned this, this, and this. They were in there for this isn't a great say this says two minutes. Like that's not enough time to complete the assignment. They need to be in there longer. We expect more, you know, more time spent within this app. Going back to your dashboard here takes you back to your main page. And you do have a login summary that shows you the percentages for each of your classes here. So this teacher aid class, kids, 100% of the kids logged in. We might need to work a little bit harder here and here on a couple of days of the week. Depending on what you guys are doing in your classrooms, those numbers, you should have a good idea what those numbers are. All right. I have a question. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, I came in a little late. You may have already mentioned this. I have 20 unpublished classes right now. So is that why I don't see it the way you see it? I have to click on publish? Uh, I've never actually seen a publish button before. So I'm assuming, <laughs> yes, you probably have to publish them. Okay. Yeah, they all say publish on the square. Um, so I'm assuming that's how I get to see it the way you're seeing it. Yeah. And my assumption is, depending on when your enrollments come through, that might be part of that, like when it's officially active. 
Mm -hmm. or it is, it's allowing you to make a choice on which classes you actually want to use this feature with. Maybe you have a fifth period that that's, this just doesn't work depending on what you teach and you know what you're, you're doing. Yeah, I'm the music teacher, so I'm guessing that's the 20 unpublished classes are my 20 classes that I'll be teaching. Sure, yep. Okay. Uh, another thing you can do up here is you can search by class name, student. I have no clue what any of my students' names are now that we got out of there, so that's not going to be a great search. We'll see if I have a Renee. There is a Renee in the first period. There we go. And so that can narrow it down if you're looking for a specific student in a specific class to kind of identify that information about them. Any questions about my classes? Okay. So truthfully, that is kind of the, the robust nature. I mean, it, it, it's quick to talk about, especially with a small group that's only asking a couple questions. Um, I, I believe it's pretty straightforward. Does this feel pretty straightforward to you all? So let me yes. ask the, let me ask this. Within the my classes, within what we talked about with the my apps, what do you feel are beneficial features that we discussed? Anybody can I'll jump just on. unmute. Okay. Um, the auto launch is awesome because every morning I spend about 30 minutes pulling up everything for the day and yeah. then just setting up the kids profile. I'll have to go in and maybe add the app so that of exactly what they need to see when they log in. Is that what they see when they log in is exactly what I put there? Yep. They'll see. So when they log in, they will down here, have a little backpack here. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, you'll just need to guide them, click on my classes. And then it will open up our page just like this. Okay. Jeff, I have it on mine if you want to put it in my room and I'll show it to you. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. I'll say for me, I teach PE, so I don't know how much I'll use of the classes and the individual students. But um, the home page, like the beginning part of Launchpad, there's also like several apps on there that just do not apply to me. So I have to go through all of those to find like my Zoom app or, you know, my email, that kind of stuff. So I've already created a folder now that I know I can do that. And I've started just dropping stuff in there that I don't really use on a daily basis to try to clean it up and organize it. So that was helpful for me. Awesome. And, you know, we see that a ton. It's like a folder that says do not touch or whatever. Put, it will say put in a yeah, not working. So, yeah, that's great because you don't need the clutter like it. It can become overwhelming, especially the more stuff gets assigned out and things like that. Uh, Miss Spencer, what about you? You're on mute. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was muted. You're um, good. <laughs> <laughs> I said pretty much the same what Blake said, because a lot of this does not apply to me as a music teacher. So that was very helpful, being able to remove the apps that I don't need. Sure. Hey, any little thing that helps clean it up, right? Yes. And then Elaine said she's also a PD teacher and so kind of moving things around. Uh, Luke, what about you? We got more people than we did earlier. No? All right. Anybody else want to share anything that was beneficial to them? Can you tell me how to delete an app? Is there a way to delete one that like I've put on? Yes. So if you go to an app, if you put it on, uh, let me make sure I'm in the right instance here so I don't delete something out of one that I shouldn't. So like I added Google Photos here. If you right click on it, remove, delete. And that's something that you can check like year to year, you might add different things and not need them moving forward. All right.